Hey folks, we're here today with uh, Amanda Robinson. Can I call you Mandy? Yes. Okay. Mandy is a longtime patient and a huge success story within our practice, but she also works for a very, very good company here in St. Louis that, that is throughout the St. Louis area and emerging uh, in other regions as well because of the way that they do business, which is very, very good for their clients. What we're going to talk about is shoes. They specifically, uh, Mandy, you can kind of... Uh, correct me here if I do anything wrong, is they're, they're more into the running community, but as uh, the CrossFit community kind of merges more into endurance training, there is going to be a huge overlap, and uh, we work with them specifically because they do a great job of putting people in the right shoe. Um, so with that, Mandy, you can kind of correct me on anything that I, that I said wrong there, and talk a little bit about these shoes. Okay. Well, first, when you come into a fleet feed, we go through a fit process. We have actually a computer-based program that you can plug 13 of your characteristics into, and then it pulls up about nine of the shoes that can work for your characteristics. The shoes that we have available are about 45 per gender. The shoes range from different support levels. So, so for the shoes that we have, the motion control shoe is for the person who tends to have extreme lower pronation. The foot really rolls into the inside. They tend to get aches and pains up through the ankles, knees, hips, and lower back just because the, sh the foot is continuing to roll. This shoe offer an extreme amount of support to the inside as well as a little bit of the lateral support for the foot so that you pretty much rebuild the base underneath the person. So they have more of a, a, a flat base to work with as opposed to their foot rolling in. Right, so the next shoe that we would progress to or that's available is a stability shoe. It's just a step down in the support so you can see the difference from the motion control to the stability. The, the foam here, the dark foam is what you kind of look for. There's no plastic TPU in this one as opposed to this one. So this one is mostly for the person who has, there's some aches and pains. They have minor overpronation where the foot rolls in. So they have just a little bit of support to help you come straight off of that shoe. Uh, there isn't a complete rebuild of the base like the motion control. It's a little bit more of a runner kind of friendly shoe. The next shoe would be the neutral shoe. This person really doesn't have any aches or pains with the ankles, knees, hips, or lower back, but if they do some miles and then it gets to be a few months, they, start, they may start to feel a little achy in the joints, not a pinpoint spot that hurts, but overall achiness. So just having great cushion underneath your, the foot will help keep the two to five times body weight going up the leg. So you can usually see that by a, another gel shock absorption inside the shoe. The next shoe would be the person that's kind of a minimalist style. This person doesn't want really anything between them and the ground, kind of mimicking barefoot. But however, you do need a little bit between you and the concrete. So this shoe has just a little bit of that foam in there, uh, as well as the rubber for gripping. And But it still allows for that flexibility and allowing you to be more that minimalist style barefoot runner. All right, Mandy gave a great explanation as far as uh, the types of shoes that Fleet Feet has for all the different types of people that are going to walk into their store, walk into Health and Performance Center. Um, what I'm going to do is just a little bit more clinical uh, explanation of what these shoes do. It's pretty much going to be a lot of what she said, but a little bit more for what we see in the office with what people are looking for. So uh, we have this big honker right here. This is the motion control shoe. And for the people in, in the office, you know who you are. You're trying to make your health care gains here. You understand that by uh, what you're going to need to do is do physical activity to shed weight, to take off the load on the knees and the hips and the, and the ankles. But you don't have necessarily the core control to be able to do that. What this shoe does, it affords you the capability to do a little bit more volume so that you can get your healthcare benefit without crushing your system. So for you, this is the people who are starting to get into uh, a little bit more of a strength and conditioning or more of a conditioning program to diminish weight, to improve their biometrics, but they run the high risk of getting injured when doing any type of running or doing any type of repetitive load bearing, which is that running or walking. So this is good for them. 
However, they want to, uh, as they make these gains, start to progress into less of a shoe, a little bit more of a, I don't want to say lower profile, but more of a sleek shoe, okay? And so that's what Manny was talking about is the stability shoe. So we take away, you know, how this is rebuilt and it has so much, um, so much material in it, and we take this out to add a little bit more performance capability while still having pretty much what, what this is, is a little bit of an arch support. So so you can still have a little bit of a weakness in hip control and core control, but be able to increase that volume without getting crushed, okay? So that's a great shoe. Now this one is a big one that we talk about for people who actually are in this shoe or actually in the smaller version or, or lower cushion of the shoe. This is a neutral shoe. Yes, there is a heel toe drop okay and so some people will get crazy and say well I don't want any of that I want my barefoot okay that's great what I say is if you run with good technique you can run like my son who runs in his Crocs and he runs great okay this shoe will allow you to do a ton of volume it will give you that cushion you will be able to feel your foot you will be able to modify your technique you will be able to pose run in this shoe Okay, so this is what I like for my long distance runners. People are doing high volume that want to try and do it in this shoe, but they're getting crushed with certain things, stress fractures, plantar fasciitis, a lot of bad things. We want to get them into that nice cushiony shoe and this is good. Now, if you're more of a lower distance and you want to feel the benefit of this shoe, if you want to build those deep intrinsics, uh, the stabilizers of the foot, this is a good shoe, okay? It's, it's got that minimalist feel. You see how much give it has to it, but if you come in here, you see the shock absorption still available. So it's taking you a little bit of this chucking it in there for almost a hybrid minimalist shoe that gives you a little bit of cushion. Do we run marathons in this? Well, I'm sure people can. Is it a good idea? Probably not, okay? If you can get away with it, great, but you're probably not gonna get away with it for very long just because you're crushing your body. If you're gonna do a lot of high volume running, this is a shoe you're gonna wanna be in. Um, but this shoe is good for training. Okay, so if you want to run in this shoe and have this shoe, that's okay. You can do that, but know what you're going for. This is building foot intrinsic. This is allowing me to do volume. All right, now we're going to go from running a little bit more into cross training or more specifically CrossFit. What we have here, and what I'm going to talk about, is this Olympic lifting or weightlifting shoe, as well as this um, more of a low profile running shoe. So we have a simple Adidas, but it's the same thing if you're going to have your Penle or your Reebok or any other of the uh, Olympic lifting shoes, it's the same concept. This is a lot like the cushion shoe that we talked about over here, but this is specifically designed for pose running due to not having any type of traction underneath here you get a lot of feedback from this shoe but at the same time you have your cushion so it allows you to kind of do some volume in this shoe while feeling the ground underneath you um, what we have these are two totally different shoes but a lot of times in CrossFit we're asked to do what this shoe provides as well as what this shoe provides so we need to understand why these shoes are necessary this is called a weightlifting shoe. What's it for? It's for weightlifting. That's as simple as that. Uh, what this does, it gives you a very stable um, heel right here to push from. What do we always say? Get on your heels, get on your heels, get on your heels. This provides a very sturdy, um, uh, part of the shoe for the heel to be in to really generate a lot of force into the ground. Plus it gives us a little bit of an incline there so we can maintain our core to extremity uh, patterning. So we're not breaking through our core nearly as much or nearly as often. It's a very good shoe to help you develop technique. It doesn't give you technique. None of these shoes give you technique. It helps you maintain it, it helps you develop it, um, and that's why we say, hey, use this shoe to get better at your weightlifting to get stronger. This shoe is more for running. Obviously, we said, since there's no traction here, it's kind of designed for that pose runner who wants to run and just pull, who doesn't want to claw and, and push. 
they want to just hit and spring. So that's great. But what we see is we have cushion here. We have a very low heel toe drop. If you have a crappy squat, okay, and you just want to weight lift in these shoes, I don't believe that your squat's going to get better unless you bring a ton of intensity into developing your squat. What we see in the CrossFit gym is most people don't know how to do that, which is why we want to put you in this shoe to help you realize that better and be able to transition your technique developed into this, in this shoe and be able to transition it into this shoe if, let's say, you're doing a 95-pound overhead squat. I don't necessarily need this shoe to be able to do that, but I need to take what I've learned in this shoe and put it into this one so I can get my 800 meter run. I think Nancy is that workout. Five rounds of a 400 meter run and 15 overhead squats at 95 pounds. This is the shoe you need to wear. But if you can't do a good overhead squat, you might be running in these, which is a problem. Now Mandy's going to talk about a product that they have that is a great um, combination of the two shoes. We talked about, hey, don't get stuck in this shoe, don't get stuck in this shoe. If you want one shoe in your bag that can help you do that workout of Nancy, this is the shoe and she'll tell you why. So this shoe is designed for side to side movement, whereas a running and walking shoe is really for forward and back movement. So this shoe, they've made it so that the forefoot is a little bit of a wider profile because you're up on your toes a little bit more, you move side to side, but then you still have that flexibility in the toe for the sprinting, as well as this little bit of the support that you need for the weightlifting. So that we would most likely use this person, this person would do cross training or the CrossFit. So Mandy's holding a bunch of different insoles right now. What we're going to look at is um, what each one of these do. Not only is uh, Fleet Feet very good at finding the right shoe, but sometimes there's a little bit more intricacy in, in getting the right solution for a client. And she's going to talk a little bit about all the options they have with insoles. Okay, so I have them aligned here from mostly for comfort all the way to support that's necessary for the different arch heights to your everyday use. So the first one here is a memory foam base. It's really just to add cushion to the shoe. If you've got a firmer shoe that you just need a little bit of softness to, this can do that for you without harming you at all. Also, it can take up some volume inside the shoe. So if you tend to be a person who has more of a narrow foot and you're using a wider shoe, but that's the only way that the shoe comes, you can add that to take up some of that volume. Next would be the athlete's insole. It's purely just kind of like the cushioning that's inside the shoe and just adding more cushioning to the shoe. So it's a little bit more of a shock absorber. It can add a little bit life to the shoe when at last minute if you need a little bit extra cushioning. Next would be the flat-footed insole. This is for that person that is truly a flat-footed individual. It is designed that when sitting and your foot is unweighted and you have a naturally flat foot, this is the insole you use because it's more of a wedge instead of an arc like the other ones. So this wedge is a little bit more comfortable for that flat-footed person so there's no pressure against that navicular bone. Next would be the arch that's more for an average low profile as well as a narrow foot. So this one fits a little bit more slimmer, it goes great inside really tight fitting shoes, so the soccer shoe uh, or um, a few of the other shoes that just fit nice and snug. You can slide this into the shoe and still have volume left for your foot. It does have a heel cup to it, so it takes the fatty pad, puts it right underneath your calcaneus, so it gives you a little bit of cushioning in that heel where it should be, and it helps support that navicular bone right across that arch, which you would feel more towards the back of the foot. The next one, the green one, is meant for an average high arch. You've got the same kind of heel cup provided like the blue ones, but this one's more for an average width foot that you can slide into different shoes if you can remove the insole that's in there. This slides in there very nicely just to help support that arch. Next would be this sole. The sole has got a little bit of cushion to it designed for that high arched individual, a little bit more long arch. And it does still have that heel cup, so you still get the cushioning in the heel, but then you also get that really high arch support. This one is moldable. You can put it in the oven for a couple of minutes and mold it to your foot, or you can just wear it around and get a good mold as well. It will not collapse inside that arch because it is fairly rigid. It just gets a little bit of a molding to your foot. The next one, the Montreal, 
is for a high arched individual. You can see that arch through there. It is supported through the arch, but then makes kind of a cup around the, the heel and puts a gel pad in there so that there's cushion. So if you have heel spurs or plantar fasciitis, this gives a little added cushion. You still get the heel cup and support, but without the pressure on that spur. Finally, for your everyday use, because some people do need extended support from their workouts into their everyday, you have, uh, we have three-fourths ones that fit nicely into dress shoes. So you got the men's three-fourths, you still have that arch support, you still have the heel cup, and they come with Velcro strips so you can slide from shoe to shoe so that way there's no slipping inside that shoe. And then for the ladies, we have an inch or lower arch support for their heels as well as an inch or higher for heels too. It does the same kind of thing, heel cup, there isn't as much pressure on through the heel in high heels, so the heel cup isn't as aggressive as it would be in a low, but you still have that nice high arch support to put inside your shoe. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of what goes into a shoe and why we even did this segment. Now, Mandy, there's a lot of different places in St. Louis where people can go to just get a shoe. Tell us why Fleet Feet is the best place to go. Well, at Fleet Feet, we have college educated and trained employees that have a good background in kind of maintenance and dealing with um, injuries that can occur with walking or running distances. Uh, and we also use a computer based program called the Fit App, where we plug in the characteristics and it gets specifically to you. So it's your foot characteristics, it's your aches and pains that we put into the computer, and it pulls up the shoes that would best work for that. And you get to experience the product. So you also get to put it on. We check the fit to make sure it does fit the foot right. And we also check the, the gait style outside where it's natural as opposed to on a treadmill where it can be forced. And then uh, finally, we listen to you and we take that into consideration. We, and we also build a relationship where we have you hopefully join us in the community. Excellent. Um, now I think you have a great understanding of not only what goes into a shoe and how to get into the right shoe, but you realize why Health and Performance Center has developed a relationship with Flea Feet. We believe wholly in what Mandy just said here about how you go about the process of putting people into the right shoe. So when you've come in and said, where do I go? What kind of shoe do I need? I write a little information on a Fleet Feet script pad and send you in the right direction. So Mandy, thank you very much for all that you've done for my practice.